In Genesis 1, verse 31, the scriptures say, God saw all that he had made, and it was good. The creator of the, the universe is, in this story, pulling back the curtains of divine mystery, and he's uh, allowing us to peek in a little bit. And, uh, and that word mystery is, is found quite often in the Bible, um, in speaking of the things that God is doing in the, the lives of in our lives, in the, in the world. And the mystery that we have here at the beginning is we, we see the how, the why, uh, the order the, uh, of the universe set up in its existence. And when we begin this story, we, we see um, God establishing before us as we continue to read God's word, uh, his establishing uh, time his establishing uh, unique and special moments of time, the whole, uh, you know, the holidays, so to speak, these unique times every year that we're supposed to remember certain aspects, things that God has done for us. Uh, we we uh, we are it's revealed to us the mystery of the Garden of Eden, special places that God establishes to commune with Him and to remember, and. Uh, he, he established again these he establishes these physical locations these essential places to help us grow in our faith and uh, you know it's just wonderful mysteries to hear uh, God's word to, to listen to the master's voice so to speak and so God addresses all of these things all of these mysteries one more mystery I could think of is worship he teaches us how to worship him and uh, how to how to um, uh, help our hearts to rise up to uh, these places that he, he wants us to go. He talks, uh, reveals the mystery of, of sin and brokenness, how dangerous the human emotions can be when uh, uh, we, we, um, we allow ourselves to be taken over by jealousy or rage or, or this intent to murder sin in our hearts obviously destroys life. But God, in his word, he invites us behind the curtain. Uh, he invites us through his word to, to understand his heart. Uh, I think to marvel at what he's saying, to ponder what he's saying. Um, and, and why did God give us this instruction book of, of life uh, here in this world? And why did he, um, why did he, he uh, begin the, uh, the, his word with a, a, the poetic account of creation and its history in Genesis. Uh, why did he, he use poetry to talk about the heavens, the earth, uh, life, and man instead of just laying out a list of, of do's and don'ts? Uh, he, I think he wants to accomplish um, uh, in, in his word uh, uh, a pointing to the Messiah. I think he wants us to um, uh, not make a to-do list out of his words, but to encounter a person, him, and to have a personal relationship with him. And so I think that's his intent. Um, I believe that uh, you know the, the poetry, uh, in a sense, causes us to wrestle. When we read a work of art, we have to ponder it. We have to think about it. We have to, I think, struggle and wrestle with it. And I think that's what he... He does with his word. He writes it in a way where we're wrestling uh, over the mysteries that he reveals to us, so to speak. Uh, he wants us to uh, to struggle. He wants us, I think, sometimes to come to this point of exhaustion and be kind of like uh, uh, Joseph wrestling with him. I think he wants us to come to that that point in our life to to wrestle with his words, to to come to the end of ourselves and. And, uh, um, and I think something happens in that when we wrestle with his words that deeply, that there's a change that happens to us. Uh, obviously, it happened in Jacob's story as he began to come to the end of himself and he, he wrestled with the things of God and they came to almost sunrise and, and the angel says, let me go. And uh, jo Jacob was uh, so desperate that, um, that he said, no, I will not let you go. And... Uh, um, and it's in that wrestling that we began to discover God's wisdom, uh, his power, his goodness. And, um, um, and we come to a place, I think, where we can finally submit uh, to his holiness. 
I think it's the intent of this divine author to uh, overwhelm our minds and to captivate our hearts and to enthrall us. Um, in a sense, uh, I think the, the, his word can bring us to this place where we, we're, we're quivering, where we're awestruck, where we're dumbfounded by, by um, the things that we learn in here. Uh, more importantly, uh, in, in that as we move through those emotions, is I think he, uh, his, the intent of his word is to, to leave us hungering for, for more, more of him and more of his, his wisdom and his guidance. And I think that's a part of our task as, as Christians uh, is, uh, is to discover that mystery that, that God has hidden in his word. And I want to encourage you today, this week, to uh, take more seriously. Um, I'm sure many of you have, but, but uh, you know, we can always go further. But to, to take seriously uh, God's word and how incredibly important it is, how fascinating it is. And, uh, and what wisdom God has given us in, in uh, hiding some secrets, uh, some uh, divine mystery in, in his word. And it's, just, it's laid out there for us to grab hold of if we will only take it. Well, I hope you have a good week. And I pray God's blessings upon you. And I pray that uh, you'll have a prosperous day in his word, a prosperous week in his word. Blessings. Bye now.